Over three years ago now, Emil Abrahamson released this video about a new hangboarding routine he'd been trying out. It's called a no-hang routine, where you aren't actually hanging from the fingerboard, but instead you're just weighting your fingers with about 80% of your body weight. The interesting part of this program is that it calls for you to do this twice a day, every day. This is a drastic departure from the classic finger strength program that schedules one or two hard, intense fingerboard sessions in a week. Emil is a former World Cup competitor and ultra high-end boulderer, so his fingers were already absurdly strong, but the results from 30 days of light fingerboarding twice daily are almost difficult to believe. Hanging from the 14mm edge, Emil was able to stack 60% more weight whilst hanging for 5 seconds. His time held on one arm hangs increased 26 times and he was able to hang on the 6mm edge for the first time in his climbing career. The results, whilst not very scientific, are unquestionably, overwhelmingly positive. Other people have backed this up too. Hannah Morris sustained a pulley injury right before trying out Emil's plan, but successfully used the plan to rehab her finger, and she says her bounce back to strength from this injury was faster than any other injury she's had. Nate Mitka, who claims to be an average climber, saw 39% increases in max hang weight on a 20mm edge and increases in max hang times on smaller edges too. So the question is, have climbers been training their fingers wrong the whole time? Well. Ultra science nerds at Hooper's Beta weighed in on the subject and expressed doubts at the protocol's effectiveness for pure strength gains compared to the traditional methods, but offered another reason why Emil may have seen such impressive results. More on that later. But I couldn't find anyone who has tried this as a beginner. Surely, if elite professionals, high-end climbers and average climbers are seeing results like this, then someone like me, who's never hangboarded ever, would have even more to gain. Should a noob even hangboard at all? Some people say you need to wait three years of climbing before you start hangboarding else you risk injury. Well, we're here to find out. I installed a fictitious handboard in my kitchen and set out to try hangboarding twice a day, every single day. Here's what happened. Obviously, we need a benchmark to see if there are any increases in finger strength. So I'm going to use the crimped finger strength test. So I'm going to do this test now and at the end of the month to see if there's any increase in strength. The test is really simple. It's just a dead hang on a 20mm edge, eight sets with adding five kilograms of body weight per set until you can no longer do a seven second hang. I don't have five kilogram weights to attach to my harness, but this cat litter weighs exactly five kilograms and I have three of them and I, to be honest I don't think I can hang off a 20 mil edge with 15 kilograms on me. If we can we'll, we'll improvise. <sighs> to be honest 20, 20 mil with just my body weight is actually pretty intense. All right, five kilograms of cat litter. Feels all right. By the way, if you like the look of these frictitious hangboards, there's a link in the description that allows you to get 20% off your order. They do sponsor the show, but these hangboards are highly recommended. 10 kilos. Wow. <laughs> 15 kilograms. <sighs> no. Okay. That's it. 15 kilograms was the max. Well, 10 kilograms was the max. Okay, so there's the results. So I can hang, I can hang on the 20 mil edge um, for seven seconds with a maximum of 10 kilograms. With 15, it was too much. I could only hang for five seconds. So we have a baseline. So we'll come back in 30 days time. I'm gonna do the training twice a day, every day, and see if I can hang on that same edge with more weight for seven seconds. I also wanted to see what was the smallest edge I could hang from, and it turned out that it was the 15 mil edge. I could not hang off the 10 mil edge.
With the benchmarks recorded, it was time to start training. But first, let's pay the bills. This episode is sponsored by Crimped. Crimped is a training app designed specifically for climbing. You create a training plan that suits your needs, be it bouldering, sport, trad, alpine climbing, whatever. It has hundreds of world-class training workouts and templates. You can log your workouts and you can analyze your progress with benchmark tests. It's particularly good for focusing on specific weaknesses. For example, I'm going back to Kalimnos later this year and to conquer those 40 meter monster routes, I need that endurance. So I've created a training plan based on the base endurance template for intermediate climbers. I also customized my plan by adding specific mobility exercises to deal with a tweaked shoulder that's been bugging me for a few months. The workouts are designed by professional climbers and coaches like Tom Randall, Ollie Torr and Emil Abrahamson, so you can rest assured that what you're doing is a tried and tested approach. I think a popular program would be the Bouldering Mastery, one that is actually created by Emil. You can choose what level suits you and select the length of time of your plan. Crimped offer two options, a Crimped Free and a Crimped Plus. There's plenty to sink your teeth into with the free version, but with Crimped Plus, you can create custom training plans, access many more workouts and pre-built skill templates like the base endurance one I'm using right now. So download the Crimped app and try it out. In fact, if you log one single session of Emil's Submax daily fingerboard routine, you'll automatically be in with a chance of winning Crimped Plus for life. So what's to lose? Give it a try and thanks to Crimped for sponsoring this episode. Here's the program in a nutshell. There are 20 reps in total. For each rep, there's 10 seconds on and then a 20 second rest. And you cycle through a few different grip types. All of this is performed on a 20 millimeter edge. And at no point are you actually hanging whilst hangboarding. Your feet are on the ground the whole time and you're supposed to apply about 70 to 80% of your body weight to your fingers, which I can say from the get-go is impossible to gauge. So I applied what I felt was 80%. You perform this routine twice a day, every day, ideally with at least six hours of rest in between sessions. So I began my training. I normally did the first session first thing in the morning desperately trying to sip hot tea in the 20 second rests between reps. And in session two, I normally did before bed. And I did two sessions whether or not I was climbing that day. Initially, I was concerned that hangboarding every single day would affect my ability to climb or that my fingers would be tired and weak. But I did not experience that at all. The no hang program is simply not that intense. Um, it's not enough to tire you out. I feel like I could probably do like 100 reps rather than 20 pretty easily and then still go climbing. It's pretty tame. Initially, I found this to be a really rewarding and convenient thing to do. The sessions are extremely easy with a hangboard in the kitchen anyway. And because uh, it's part of the program, you feel like you're actually doing something. However, after around 10 days, I actually ran into some issues with my fingers. We've encountered my first issue, which is um, numbness in these two fingers here. Um, initially, I thought it was carpal tunnel. Sometimes I get carpal tunnel if I work at my desk for too long using a mouse. Something in here seems to compress that nerve that gives me that problem. Um, however, I've not been at my desk. I've been climbing. Um, so the only thing I can think of is the fingerboard and that's the only thing I've changed. It's not painful, it's just slight sort of fuzziness, sort of pins and needles and a little bit of numbness. Um, if it gets worse, I'm gonna take time off as Right now, I'm gonna push through. Let me know if you think that's a bad idea. Let's talk about discipline. Throughout the 30 day experiment, I did not remain disciplined. Most of the infractions were breaking the six hour between sessions rule. There just isn't enough hours in the day for a very late hangboarding session in the morning climbing outdoors all day and then hangboarding again before bed. 
I can't do all that and have six hours of rest between like stressing my fingers. It's just not possible. However, I didn't actually notice any issues with short periods of time between sessions and I didn't lose sleep over it. I also simply bailed on a few sessions because I forgot or I was at a wedding or I was traveling. Rather than just simply miss those sessions, I actually extended the experiment slightly beyond 30 days to ensure that I still got 60 handboard sessions in total, even if it wasn't strictly two per day. Over the course of the month, I thought or I hoped that this would get easier and easier and become part of my routine and maybe I'd just end up doing this forever, even after the initial 30 days. But it became obvious pretty quickly that that wasn't going to happen because this is boring. We are well underway with the experiment now and um, the novelty is kind of wearing off. I used to get a kind of dopamine hit out of doing um, these little exercises because they're so easy to do. They only take, um, how long do they take? 20 sets. It only takes 10 minutes. The, the one in the morning is easy to do. You just wake up and do it. But the one at night time, I always forget I have to do it and it means that it's always the last thing I do before bed and it's kind of a drag. It's because the 20 second break is not long enough to like make a cup of tea or do the dishes or anything like that. It's, you're just hanging about. I'm complaining about nothing here. I'm just letting you know that um, I'm bored of this now. Towards the end of the 30-ish days, I did start to notice some changes. I don't think I've put on any muscle mass, but my forearm feels just like harder and denser. It doesn't feel bigger, just feels heftier. I don't know. I've also noticed that when I'm pumped on climbs now, I can see my veins popping out of my arm a lot more. I don't normally get that and I've not lost any weight over this experiment. So I think it's like increased blood flow in my forearm. Can't be sure though. But all of that is just hearsay unless we get the results. The proof is in the pudding. So how did I do? Let's recap on where I was before. On the 20 millimeter edge, using the crimped finger strength test, which is brutal by the way, just running this test is the most intense hangboarding I've ever done. By adding five kilograms each rep, I got to plus 10 for a seven second hang. And I was able to get off the ground with plus 15 kilograms on me. So let's see if a month of no hang training made any difference. This is us up to 10 kilograms. So this is equal to my best last time. Uh, two, one. Yeah, no problem. Easy peasy. So stop. <laughs> right. right, successfully just did 15 kilograms. So that's me fa already five kilograms better than my previous. And that was fine. Cutler master. You can't shat the floor. <laughs> right, I got 20 kilograms of cat litter attached to me. So this would be the most I've ever done by a long way. He is wondering why I'm touching his cat litter. He gets very sensitive about his cat litter, you see. Ah, yes. Easy. Oh, just shy. Just shy of 25. 30 days later, I can now complete this seven second hang with 20 kilograms, which is 10 kilograms more and a 12 and a half increase in total weight on my fingers. I weigh 70 kilograms. Now I can hang with plus 25 for around six seconds. Again, 10 kilograms more than previously. As for the smallest edge I can hang off at all, before it was the 15mm edge on the fictitious board, but now I can hang on the 10mm edge for a couple of seconds. So my results are positive, but not as groundbreaking as Emil's. A 12.5% increase in strength in one month is a lot though. I very much doubt that I'd be able to add 10 kilograms to my max hang in 30 days without any hangboarding. So that I feel like there's definitely a positive result here. However, because I'm a beginner, I'm still in that honeymoon period of climbing where I get stronger every week. I would have ex expected to get stronger anyway. I wouldn't have expected to get stronger by 12.5%, but a positive increase is what I see month on month anyway. 
The question I have is, would I have achieved more by doing the traditional method of really intense hangboard sessions once or twice a week? I think the answer is probably yes, but with a much bigger chance of injury because I still have those soft, delicate noob fingers. <laughs> so have I noticed it when climbing? No. <laughs> it's not like I now pull on the wall and think, whoa, I am way, way stronger. There's like, there's too many variables for me to notice a 12.5% like increase in strength. One thing I have definitely noticed for, however, which is, you can't measure this, is less tweakiness. Quite often when I get to a hard move, particularly with indoor bouldering, I can bail on that move because it's painful in my fingers or because I feel like I might get injured and I'm terrified of a pulley injury. It's almost inevitably going to happen to me at some point, but I would really like to avoid that as long as I can. So when the move feels just too much, I often just simply bail on it. But after this experiment, I've been feeling a certain robustness in my fingers, particularly this, um, this little guy, the ring finger. They feel a bit less bendy and more durable. So I feel like I might not be stronger, but I'm willing to pull harder. And I've experienced less little niggles after hard pulling or during hard climbing sessions. So, should you do this? Basically, I think this is ideal for someone who has never handboarded before. The simple act of just not actually hanging, keeping your feet on the floor and modulating the load with your legs, it works so well. It's so simple. It's a great introduction to fingerboarding and we all know fingerboarding does work. I also think this is probably an excellent way to nurse your fingers back from an injury, like what Hannah Morris did. I've added this hangboarding program to my warm-up routine, but now I'm actually going to transition to proper high-intensity hangboarding and see if we can get even better results. So there we go. Another inconclusive summary about Emil's famed no-hang protocol. I hope you found that somewhat informative. Check back next week for more climbing content, and thank you very much for watching. Peace.